This is FNAF 2 Stingray, one of FNAF's most infamous and terrifying lost media viruses ever made. And this is me playing it, but what is it? Is it even real and how did we get here? Well, if you're not careful enough, you may end up in the same situation as me and thousands of other FNAF players. So that's why I'm going to explain and answer all of your questions in this video. My name is Gavin Gon, and let's dive deep into the truth of one of FNAF's biggest unsolved mysteries ever. FNAF needs no introduction, as it has recently just celebrated its 10 year anniversary, but over the past 10 years the series has evolved and changed for better and for worse. But as of recent, a new phenomenon has started to plague the community, and that is FNAF virus content. If you are as big as a fan as me of the franchise, especially within recent months, you cannot escape these fan made videos depicting bootleg FNAF games that have viruses in them such as malware, trojans, and most importantly ransomware. These fan made videos and even fan made games have made way in the community, with many big creators making videos talking about them, playing them, and even more. But this content didn't just start and become popular out of nowhere, there's actually a catalyst to this trend, and that is FNAF 2 Stingray. Before I explain to you how FNAF 2 is relevant to all of these other FNAF virus videos, we first need to take a look at when Stingray became popular, and most importantly, take a deep dive into what it is so we are all on the right page. Around 2022 to 2023, TikTok became flooded with videos showing off a supposedly real and very disturbing virus for FNAF 2 that would damage your phone beyond repair and hack into it. Around this time frame, more and more videos kept being made to spread its existence, and by early 2024, it was all over the internet. Around this time, that's when the FNAF ransomware videos began popping up, meaning this supposed FNAF 2 virus indirectly or directly caused this trend in the community. So with a basic timeline established for where we are in this story, we need to take a step back and explain in depth where I became involved and why I involved myself in finding this virus. Simply put, no one knows that this virus is real, and for right now, it is only an urban legend, and that's where I come in. After hearing rumors about this urban legend, it instantly intrigued me, and I immediately began taking a look into it, and a couple months ago, after a short and rather misunderstood misleading investigation, I made this video, where I explained my very surface level evidence on what I believed at the time was conclusive evidence regarding the Stingray virus. But after reopening the case a month ago, I realized my evidence didn't match with these new claims, and was completely wrong. But then I also realized that so was everyone else on the internet who talked about or made videos about this virus, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Before I begin explaining my investigation and how I believe myself to be the only person on the internet to know the full truth of the virus, I must explain in depth what Stingray is. With that being said, I must mention that to truly understand what the FNAF 2 virus is, you need to understand all of the falsehoods, misinformation, hoaxes, and so forth that it's shrouded by. So if you've heard of this mysterious urban legend before, I want you to forget everything you know about it, because after a month of research into this topic, I was finally able to find all the right answers and lies regarding Stingray. So as I said, forget everything you know because it's all wrong. FNAF 2 Stingray is a supposed virus for Android, which was released in 2015 or 2014 some reports claim, on an app similar to the Google Play Store and App Store called Aptoy. This store was very similar to those official stores, but because of its unofficial nature, many pirated games, bootlegs, free versions, and much more could be found on it. Meaning that since the developers didn't need to be verified, some of those games also could have had many trojans, malware, and much more hidden in its code, designed to target young and potentially vulnerable or gullible users to download the games. These reports and claims were also attributed to Stingray, where supposedly there was a developer in Aptoid that re-released FNAF 2 for free, and when played, you would be jump scared by a girl or chica without eyes, and then your phone was given a virus and it would appear as if it was factory reset. Unfortunately, no one has been able to confirm the validity on if you got jump scared by chica or a girl, and because of that, there has been no definitive answer on what it actually was, but most people believe it was chica. This was the first effort official story regarding Stingray, and this is what it was for around two to three years. Until last year, where another version of this urban legend started circulating around the internet. This second version of Stingray is also very popular, if not more, due to people thinking this is the truth behind Stingray, and it goes as follows. Once downloading the APK for the game, before you can play it, the game makes you accept all permissions before being allowed to start the application, and once you do that, the game will delete itself or appear as a black screen, even though it's still installed on your phone. 
Then a program called android.elite.1.origin begins to run and collect all your phone's data. During all of this, all of your contacts are getting sent messages every 5 seconds saying, hey at contact name, Elite has hacked you, obey or be hacked. And if you attempt to open any apps, or in some cases immediately after being hacked, this image will appear on screen. This version got way more popular for a multitude of reasons, with the main reasons being that it's just, well, way more grounded in reality, and the Elite virus is actually real and affected old Android phones back in the early 2010s. There was even an APK on Aptoid during that time called Angry Birds Transformers, where it was actually hiding this virus in it for any unsuspecting victim to download it. And it was prominently featured and documented on websites, Reddit threads, and more talking about how to avoid the Elite virus and so on. These are the two main stories and versions of this urban legend, and with these being the two legit versions of the stories, it was finally time for me to begin my investigation. So now I finally I had two leads to follow, which was to find an APK that matched the description of either of these claims. I wanted to take a different approach compared to other internet theorists and investigators, as most if not all of them were strictly reciting already well-known information that may or may not be true. But then there were some that were also looking for supposed APKs of either of these versions of this virus, and were seeing if they fit the description of these claims. But I wanted to test the APKs and play them while also data mining the files to see if they were from 2014 to 2015, so that's what I set off to do. I began by googling FNAF 2 Stingray and immediately started to look through various reddit threads discussing the virus. Many threads had a lot of mixed information, along with various APK downloads and links to different versions of the supposedly real virus, but I kept looking through them and the files to confirm that many of them were just recreations or blatant fakes. But that was until I stumbled upon a very intriguing reddit post, when translated from Portuguese to English is titled I actually found FNAF 2 Stingray. And with it being from 2 months ago and having little engagement, I was intrigued. The thread goes as so. Hello everyone. First of all, I'm sorry if my Portuguese sounds wrong. I'm using a translator to type. I know this topic is apparently already saturated in your community, but I had a real experience with Stingray when I was a kid and was looking for a download for FNAF 2 for Android, and I'm desperate for someone to listen to me about this. At the time, I didn't have a computer and had just become fascinated with FNAF after the release of the second game. I had a tablet and thought, why not look for a way to download the game? It was paid on Google Play. Until I searched for something like FNAF 2 APK on Google. The first link that appeared to me was a Russian website that contained some phrases in English saying it was the game's download. I promptly downloaded it and installed it. But when it was time to install it was with the name Stingray and Russian letters. I installed it because I was a poor child, but the game seemed unfinished and had demo in the menu. I was already tired of playing the demo because it was the only free source that was on Google Play. The only thing I vividly remember is Chica's jump scare that appeared for 0.1 second and was already overlaid by a website that opened by itself. The website contained several ads and pop-ups and seemed to be made to infect whoever accessed it. Where am I going with this? Well, I recently saw in the FNAF community talking about this and I promptly went to look for my tablet from that time. I really hoped that it was working and that I still had the APK downloaded. I didn't delete absolutely anything from this tablet and very lucky it was alive. Well, it took forever for me to access the file and finally send it via Bluetooth to my phone because obviously the system was already too slow and the screen was kind of destroyed. The file was in my downloads folder and incredibly I had kept it installed directly on the tablet too. Anyway, I uploaded the file to Mediafire and I hope I am contributing to unraveling this line for those curious, download at your own risk. After reading this, I was extremely curious, enough to the point to where I actually downloaded it on my old Samsung phone to play it for myself. And let me say, it did not disappoint. So here is the first ever video of me playing the supposed Stingray virus. Okay, so right here is my old phone, um, the one that I'm going to be playing the, uh, you know, Stingray virus on. So, <clears throat> basically, uh, I don't have anything done on this video yet, so um, I'm sure I said in the video that this came from the Reddit thread, um, the, the APK download. So, basically, um, I did a factory reset almost. Um, I didn't do an actual factory reset because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to sign back in, but I deleted almost everything I can think of that could go back to my name, uh, the SIM card doesn't work and everything, um, but basically there's no internet on this thing, I have it on Bluetooth mode just to be safe, no Wi-Fi, no nothing, so um, the only thing I really have left on this is a couple um, useless files that if I do get hacked won't really matter too much, um, and the APK download, which this is it. Okay, so we have the, uh, the audio down, and we're clicking install, so... We're just gonna see what happens. 
Okay, add to the home screen. That's it right there. It literally says Stingray. <laughs> so, oh my God, it's doing the permissions. No, 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 no. This is sign was asked for an, I'm gonna deny. I'm gonna just deny everything. And we'll see if we can play. If we, oh no, dude, I'm terrified. Oh, Zap was built for an older version. Oh my god, it needs a GPS. You need to activate GPS. No. Oh. Okay. This app is using the full screen. The home, back, and recent buttons are hidden to minimize. Oh, this is just for my phone. Okay. Next. Okay. We have the audio turned up a little bit. So, this is Five Nights at Freddy's 2 demo. It says Elite Stingray. It doesn't do anything if you click on it. So, um, I guess we'll just play. This is legit, guys. So... New game. So I'm standing up while I'm doing this because I have a tripod um, right up here, which is holding my phone. So this might be a little weird. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as steady as possible. Yeah, so I don't, I don't really... <laughs> okay, so if it's going to be anything like the virus, at the end of the night, we're going to get jump scared. Um, which means this is probably just a knockoff. Um, this, this might not be, I don't think this is real. Oh! Oh! Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. That's that. That's it, guys. This might be real. I don't know. But that's it. That's it, dude. Oh my god, dude. I'm gonna turn my camera around. Hold on. Dude, I don't know if you guys can see me. Hold on. Hold on for a second. I'm putting my other phone down. Dude. Oh, oh you can't see. You can't see. You can't see. There's tears, bro. That's, dude. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's one thing I have to admit to you, it's, it's not real. I mean, obviously, it doesn't match any of the descriptions about the virus, and it's just poorly put together. Hell, after data mining it, all the files were from 1979? I mean, come on, why would it be in Russian text when the urban legend comes from the Spanish and Portuguese speaking community? After this little hiccup in my search, I realized that finding the truth of this virus was going to need some thinking outside of the box. So with my first day of research over, I began thinking of where to go from here. The next day, I had a plan, and that was to start looking where no one else has looked before, and that's for the source of these claims. You see, as I mentioned, people are only looking for the APKs, or they are just spitting surface level information from the internet out into their videos to either debunk or prove Stingray. But I decided to take my investigation even deeper than anyone else's, and that's by looking for the source. This second search was very much so the same as the first, but with me instead focusing on finding the earliest mentions of something similar to the two descriptions for Stingray. I searched older Reddit threads, archives, links, and much more, and that was until I noticed a pattern on a lot of these reddit posts. There was a commenter named SwapperFishy12 on almost every post I saw regarding Stingray. So with me potentially finding another lead, I clicked on his profile and searched through it a bit, and then I realized that I found something groundbreaking. They own a discord server specifically made for investigating the Stingray virus. So I immediately joined, and after joining I was flooded with tons of information and help regarding my research. But unfortunately, a lot of the chats weren't really relevant relevant to what I was searching for at the time, as many people were just looking for the APKs and playing them to see if they were legit or not. Shortly after I joined, I let everyone know who I was and why I joined the server. And funnily enough, someone actually noticed who I was and actually bumped me up to be a moderator in the server, which I thought was kind of funny. But regardless of that, I continued my search and began looking towards Aptoid since both stories mentioned that they were from Aptoid. And since the Reddit post made by Swapper mentioned two Aptoid store pages under the names of Myla UPV and Edgar Array or something like that, that that reposted FNAF 2, that's where I continued to look. Yeah, I'm terrible with names, it's gonna be butchered for the rest of this video, I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, after doing a couple more searches into those names, along with Aptoid and FNAF 2, I miraculously found two videos posted in 2015 of people downloading FNAF 2 from the Milo UPV store, meaning it was a real store. After they downloaded the APKs, the game appeared as normal on their home screen, and the videos ended without showing gameplay. But I noticed something odd, do you notice it? The apostrophe in Freddy's is missing, meaning that something is off about these APKs. Looking at one of the video's comment sections, we find our first major discovery. 
Many comments say that the video helped them a lot when it came to downloading the APK, but some say their screen went black, ads appeared, and that it had a virus, but no one mentions anything about a Chica jump scare, which makes it seem like this could all just be a version that had FNAF 2 with the Elite virus in it, but we can't know for sure, as we don't have enough information. That's why I decided to look at the Myla UPV store's comment section for the game, which I had found through the Wayback Machine, and there was nothing mentioning what the YouTube video's comments said. So I then shifted focus to the other store, Agare or however you say it, and I found the same thing. I found some videos of people downloading it and some of people even playing it, and apart from the missing apostrophe and Fetties, it runs fine, except for this one video where the kid keeps getting ads in the middle of it. But the thing is, no one said anything about there being a virus in these videos comment sections, or even in the store's comment section. So unless we get a verified APK download from either of these stores, then we won't know if these are viruses or not. But since I had to use the Wayback Machine to go to a 2015 version of Aptoid, the APK download wasn't available or working, meaning I couldn't fact check it the way I was doing with the rest. So with this being said, I chalked up the one YouTube video's comments to be a coincidence and continued moving forward. With these two leads being dead ends for now, I started searching around more, and this is where my memory gets a little bit blurred regarding what I was looking for exactly, and looking at. But eventually, I was led to a popular Spanish YouTube channel called Prophecy X. This channel posts a lot of FNAF related videos, and made a video over two years ago talking about the virus, so with the possibility of another lead, I took a look at the video. Due to it all being in Spanish, I will just explain the main points of interest throughout the video. During it, he explains the basic backstory behind the virus, and just talks about it in length, but around the middle of the video, Prophecy shows us this screenshot, when translated says this. Here's another fact, the FNAF 2 port to Android that pretended to be the official one and stole your data. This comes from 2015, when FNAF was at its peak, but several children believing that the game was already on free Android downloaded that APK, and once installed, only a photo of a girl without eyes was seen and the app closed by itself. Then you realize that all of your data on your phone was stolen, and the phone literally appeared as factory reset. Keep this screenshot in the back of your mind, as it'll come up later and is actually one of the most important pieces of evidence for this case. Continuing to watch the video, Prophecy explains how they were able to find an iceberg video where it talked about the virus, and shows a screenshot of it. Again, another lead, which will be very important for later, but the video wasn't done yet. As I continued to watch the video until the end, nothing else of notable interest seemed to appear, so I watched it two more times for safe measure, and still, nothing else to note. So I decided to check out his channel some more afterwards, and that is when I saw that Prophecy made a part 2 video just not months ago. Praying for some more leads and information, I watched part 2. This video had notably way more information than the last, showing off emails he got regarding people's testimonies, talking about the iceberg again, and giving another in-depth explanation into the virus. But that was until the end of the video. You see, in the beginning of his video, he mentions that the real Stingray virus has been found, and at the end of the video, he starts to talk about some new evidence that came out recently that proves this. He talks about another YouTube channel called Neroni Hollow, and a video made by him regarding Stingray. So again, I watched another video and blah blah blah, you get the point. Neroni's video was very interesting to say the least, and talked a lot about what the virus was and etc. But then he began talking about another YouTube channel called Jonah, and how they posted real proof of the virus. The video Jonah posted shows them using an emulator called Bluestacks to look at the app's configuration settings, and when doing so, the infamous image seen after being hacked by the Elite virus is seen. Now, I was stunned, as this was some of the most convincing proof of the virus we've seen yet. I mean, we have two major YouTubers talking about Jonah's video, and Jonah literally showing proof for the most part. So after this, I knew I had to get in contact with Jonah to see if the files were still available, so I commented on their video and waited. Ten hours later, and I got a response, and a friend request on Discord. It was Jonah. After some short introductions, I got down the business, and and immediately began asking for their side of the story and how they found the APK and if they had the files for it. Luckily, they had all the information we needed. Alright, so I'm going to start with my story. First of all, everything started in May 2021, when Spanish FNAF YouTuber Prophecy X uploaded a video about FNAF Stingray. This started the whole trend in the Spanish community, and I would say a bit in the English one. This video was about the APK, which in the time was lost media, and how it worked along with many stories about it. This got my attention. Actually, it got the attention of a whole community who tried to contact the OP of the comment to get more information and a screenshot. This never happened, and the OP never sent the screenshot, so the APK started to be seen as a creepypasta until 2024. In 2023, supposed gameplay of FNAF Stingray got uploaded on YouTube. This gameplay got a lot of attention in this year, where the Spanish community started talking about it, but like a lot. People started to make videos, edits, and shorts about it. Basically, it was started to be seen as real again and not just a creepypasta. When I noticed this, it was weird 
search for me, since the gameplay didn't match what the description was given to us for the APK from 2021. So I started to investigate about it, this is where my part starts. So when searching information for this, I talked with a lot of people in the Spanish community. That's when I found an English user who said that he knows the creator of the app. Thanks to him, I got the link to a Reddit post that had the APK, and also a lot of information that helped me to prove that Stingray is completely fake. First of all, I tested the Stingray app, nothing happened. There was a black screen. I got a bit disappointed because I was thinking that there was going to be real gameplay. I kept trying with hope that something would happen, but nothing. I was about to give up until I got the idea to start playing with the app configuration because I noticed some weird stuff, like I couldn't close the app or the configuration app was kind of not working well. I had to restart BlueStacks to use the configuration app properly. So I started to play with the configuration and that's when I found the first piece of this big puzzle. When I tried to delete the cache of the app, this image appeared. With all of this information, we now see a way clearer picture on the situation and everything regarding Jonah's video. But that's not all. Shortly after this conversation, Jonah was able to find the link to the APK. This was it. This might actually be it. After all of this time, I was finally able to see if it was real. But before I did that, I needed to verify with Jonah what Reddit post originally had the APK. Luckily, I was able to find it after Jonah described some details of it, and now it was showtime. The Reddit post still existed, and the same link was found on it, and Jonah confirmed that everything was correct. So all I had to do was look through the files. So I sent all my findings to the Discord server, and then downloaded the APK on my old phone. So I downloaded the same virus I was talking about and that I shown and to prove that it is my phone, um, I mean, I, it's, it's a phone, so it doesn't really matter whose phone it is. But as you can see, look at TikTok is like burned into the screen. But as you can see, all the same files, I opened it with WinRAR. Um, you can even see the, yeah, you can see all the stuff right there. So download, all right, there's the APK. This is the extracted version or the zipped version, as you can see. Uh, I downloaded it on September 16th, uh, 2024. We click that, and it opens all the files. And as you see, we got a 2014 file in there, but we also have a 2022 and a 2022. And then the 2024 files are from when I downloaded it. Unfortunately, meaning this isn't the original. This has been tampered with in some way to include new files um, and you don't need to play the game to know that this is fake because the files show you it's fake. Yep, unfortunately, this was also fake, meaning many people's videos are now outdated and filled with misinformation. I'm just surprised it took us this long to debunk this, as all I did was zip the APK and then extract the files to find this out. I didn't even have to play it or anything. So after showing Jonah the proof, they sincerely apologized and said they didn't know and that they were lied to by the Reddit post. But with Jonah's in-depth testimony on where the urban ledger became popular from, them thinking it's fake, and also mentioning the screenshot from Prophecy X's video, we weren't at a complete dead end just yet. Again, thank you Jonah for everything you helped me with in this investigation, and if not for you, we wouldn't have been able to debunk this fake version of Stingray. Plus with your testimony, it gave me way more insight on where to continue my investigation, but with all this out of the way, we had to keep moving forward. Again, back at square one. I needed to find the source of this virus and the claims of it. Fortunately, I still had the iceberg and the screenshot to look into from Prophecy's video, so I immediately got to work on that. I started at the screenshot, as it was more promising and easy to reverse image search compared to the very low quality iceberg thumbnail featured in Prophecy's video, and when I did that, it took me to the source of this image. The source came from a Twitter post made on May 2nd of 2021 by a user named FNAF Lost, with the post saying this when translated. There's been a lot of talk about some sort of Five Nights at Freddy's 2 APK that contained a malicious malicious virus that could delete all of your data and steal it, back in 2015. There are a lot of rumors about it, testimonies from people, but not much evidence. Have you heard about this APK? Then underneath the post is the same screenshot from Prophecy's video. Then looking at the comments, people mentioned an iceberg chart that had the same description or screenshot. I'm not really too sure and I can't really remember. But I knew we were heading in the right direction, so I went back to Prophecy's video for more clues until I noticed something odd. His first video was posted one day after this Twitter account made their post with the screenshot. This immediately began the race some questions on Prophecy X's validity, because was Prophecy already making the video beforehand and then somehow got the image after it was posted on Twitter, or was it floating around prior to the Twitter post? After all, to make a full edited video like he did in less than a day is almost impossible, especially with the majority of the information being about the screenshotted comment. It just makes it all very hard to believe if you catch my drift. All of this, along with him talking about Neroni's video that is now outdated due to the debunked APK from Jonah, made me start to think that this was all some elaborate scheme to get views 
this, but before I made any significant accusations, I had to just keep looking into this. Now since there wasn't any more leads regarding the screenshot, but since there seemed to be connections to it and the iceberg, I knew that this screenshot and iceberg was the key to solving this mystery once and for all. So after some time of reverse image searching, I was able to find a re-upload of the iceberg video. The iceberg video was about Android viruses, games, and media, and in the part 2 version of this re-upload, we finally found the elusive iceberg once and for all. In the video description, it says that the original one was uploaded in December of 2020, making this video the first ever mention of the virus ever, at least the first ever mention that is still actively available on the internet. But then after the small victory in the investigation, I was absolutely blindsided by the contents of what was in this video. The FNAF 2 segment is word for word the exact same as what the screenshot said. And with this revelation, I was completely confused and lost, as yes, both of these were connected and related, but what came first, the screenshot or the video? Hell, everything led back to these two things, and none of them even mentioned the name Stingray, so where did that come from? So with more questions than answers, I knew there was one last ditch effort attempt to get these pieces to connect, and the only way I knew how I'd be able to get that to happen was by getting in contact with Prophecy, because doing so would allow us to figure out how he was able to make his video a day after his screenshot got posted and much, much more. So I commented on his video and waited for a response. As I waited for him to respond back to me, I found something else very interesting on his part 1 video that I have previously missed. He had pinned a comment from 3 years ago that had 1.7k likes, which when translated said this. Hello, how are you? I'm the creator of the comment about the app that steals data. The truth is that it is not fake. The application was real in 2014 in the App Toy store. There was a time it was in that store. Now the user has also been unsubscribed. I remember that its name was Stingray with Arabic numbers and letters. I have a very blurry screenshot that I rescued. It looks too pixelated. But I have an image that can recreate what it looked like in Aptoid and the interface of what I saw and how it was. It was my mistake to download the game since I agreed to accept that it could access all my photos and data on my phone. It was a Samsung, I remember it well. Warning, I can recreate a screenshot since the one I have is too blurry. Supposedly, this user was the same person who made this screenshot and comment, and to my knowledge, this pinned comment is the first ever mention of the name Stingray, like, ever. They also mentioned how they were going to recreate a screenshot of the app since the one they had was too blurry. So scrolling through the replies of this comment, I also found that they made a reply comment 9 months ago, where they say that they sent a screenshot to Prophecy, and that the jump scare that they saw was of a Splink model Chica, which was prominently featured in a lot of early SFM animations back in the day. With all this new information, I was still skeptical as this reply comment was made one month before his part 2 video, so why didn't Prophecy show the recreation screenshot if he got it sent by this user? Also, modding FNAF 2 Mobile Edition to have a completely new asset wasn't even possible back then because of the game's coding. On PC it might have been, but even then it was still terrible and very hard to do. Then also, in the pinned comment, they mentioned that the game was from 2014, when in the original screenshot of the comment they said that it was from 2015. Along with all of this, how how would they have a screenshot if the app factory reset your phone? They specifically said screenshot, not that they recorded with an external device or phone or anything like that, but instead they said screenshot. Then them saying that the screenshot they had was too blurry made me ask, well, how? If it somehow got corrupted and it was somehow still saved on your phone, then it's most likely not going to end up becoming blurry, but not even viewable in the first place, and then that's after your phone got factory reset. So with taking all this into account, their story was just highly skeptical. But then that's when I got a message on Discord, and it was prophecy. So with all these questions needing to be answered, I proceeded to do the same thing I did with Jonah and started interrogating him for the truth. I knew we were close to finding the truth out, so I asked him these three main questions that were essential for the case. Where did you get the screenshot? Do you know if the pinned comment posted on your Stingray video is a legitimate claim slash source? And lastly, did you get a screenshot slash recreation photo sent to you by the commenter? And this was his response to my questions. And it's a lot, so just be ready for this info dump. Okay, I believe this comment comes from a post made in my community section a long time ago. However, I can't quite remember if it's coming from a post or a comment made on a video. The guy says he's the one who made that comment, either way but I can't find the comment. If I can find it, I'll pass you the evidence, since the YouTube comment search engine is pretty bad. Also to clarify why I didn't put his name in the first screenshot, well, I don't really remember, but I cut the image wrong and then had a hard time finding the comment, so I had to use only the comment without the user. Posts like these where they talk about genuinely fictional stuff in the case of Stingray. There are many, not just this one, but I can tell you that there is a serious case of Mandela effect or mass hysteria. What do I mean by this? Well, basically, I believe that many of the testimonies are not entirely true and come from experience 
experience is told by other friends or that they saw from somewhere else ended up being not real. To this date, there is no evidence of the existence of a ghost girl or a girl with no eyes that appeared in a pirated phone part of FNAF. Actually, in fact, this is factually impossible, and I will explain this in another message. I don't think I received that recreation. Anyways, I could search my mail to try and see if I have it. I admit that many emails related to the Stingray case I didn't open as I was afraid of the whole virus thing. Yes, I was afraid that a cell phone virus would hit my computer. Now with these three questions thoroughly answered, we then proceed to talk about this mystery some more, and I showed him all of my findings and evidence up until where we are right now in this case. We also talked about how modding FNAF 2 Mobile is basically impossible to have a girl with no eyes jump scare, due to it being a closed source game, meaning that the source code is not publicly available and can only be changed by Scott Cawthon himself. After these conversations, I began thinking and realized I still had one more major question for him. Okay, so I need something clarified for my video. Video. You took this screenshot and then used it in your first FNAF Stingray video, correct? Also, can you confirm that this user from this screenshot is the same that you pinned in your first video's pinned comment? After asking him this question, he shows me a screenshot of him actually owning the FNAF Lost Twitter page, meaning it would make sense that he did take the screenshot and was able to use it in his part 1 video. So after hours of him looking for the source of where he took the screenshot from, we finally were able to confirm that the pinned commenter was the same person in the first screenshot as he sent over this image, which is the exact exact same comment as the pinned comment. The username, profile picture, and everything lines. So now we know they weren't lying about being the same commenter, but we still had to find the source of it, which Prophecy didn't have. And during all this, I also mentioned and showed Prophecy the reply comment where they claimed to have sent a screenshot to him, where he confirmed that he couldn't find it anywhere on any of his emails, DMs, and etc. He said that if the commenter wanted him to see it, they would have said where they sent it, but they were being vague, so we probably think that they were just lying. With all these other questions answered, we were still at a roadblock. Who made what first? Where did they get their information from? And how do we get in contact with them? Both of us were beginning to think that Stingray was a hoax, but even after that, we discovered that there was still more that made us think we found our answer. And that was when we took another look at the Iceberg Creators channel. He made a community post where he said this, and to think that this individual indirectly started the FNAF 2 Stingray mess it's me, with a picture of him. This was not a good look, and it only got worse as we found a comment from him that said this. I talked about the FNAF data stealer, and some YouTubers talked about the topic too, and then they changed the name on TikTok to Stingray. Remember what I said earlier about how the iceberg and screenshotted comment never mentioned anything about Stingray, and that the first mention of it was from the pinned comment left on Prophecy's first video? Well, even he somewhat acknowledges this, meaning that the name came from a very untrustworthy source, and due to Prophecy pinning that comment, it's actually all Prophecy's fault. Just kidding, but you get my point. If it weren't for that pinned comment, this Stingray thing might not have even existed. After we unraveled all this, we realized we were looking the beast right in its eyes, but we just weren't 100% sure on our evidence since we couldn't get in contact with those two. And just like what Jonas said to me in their testimony, the whole community tried to get in contact with the commenter for more information and the screenshot, which no one was able to. So with all this being said, this is Prophecy's theory on what he thinks actually happened. A random guy creates a video of an iceberg making up a fake story about a FNAF mobile port with a virus. People believe it. Someone makes a comment confirming this story with absolutely no proof at all. They send it to me and take a screenshot of this comment. I make the video sharing the misinformation from the iceberg and the comment. I pin the comment of the author and he creates a random name for this virus, which was Stingray. Someone recreates the virus in 2023. Supposedly the case is solved, but it was just a recreation made up in 2023. And with this, it all started to make sense. If true, this is the greatest gaslight, urban legend, hoax, or whatever you want to call it in FNAF history, even bigger than the Talbert Files situation, and we were at ground zero of it. But then, just like that, with all this information and all these leads, we couldn't move any further in our case. These two leads are our best bets at finding the truth of this virus, but even with all this evidence, we still can't be 100% sure on anything unless we get them to tell us the truth. Even Google searching before 2021 shows absolutely nothing regarding a FNAF 2 virus anywhere on the internet. So unless I missed something throughout my investigation, or just completely ignored something or something like that, then these two people are our best bets at fully knowing the truth behind Stingray. Even with all this evidence, and with how solid and conclusive it all looks, we will never be 100% sure on if this is the true end of the story, and I believe that this investigation investigation is far from over. There's still many questions left unanswered, like where did all these new claims come from? Is this all just a Mandela effect? Maybe mass hysteria? I mean there's so many theories about this that who knows, there's so much. So with all that being said, 
If you want to help this investigation or look into it yourself, all of the links for everything is in the description, along with the Discord server link if you want to join and help them, because without SwapperFishy12 and his server, this video wouldn't be possible. Same goes with Prophecy, Jonah, and everyone else.